So great to have everybody with us here today. Uh, I, I appreciate you all attending. Um, you know, got, got a lot to uh, share here with SDS2 2022. Another exciting year, another exciting release with a lot of good stuff in it here. So um, I'm sure there will be questions as we go along this webinar. I'll be happy to answer those uh, towards the end of the presentation. We'd love to try to, to keep on track here during the presentation. So we got that questions pane on the GoTo webinar uh, pane over there. We'll get to those towards the end uh, just to kind of help us stay on track. So a uh, little bit of uh, introduction to me. My name's David Zapka. Um, you know, a lot of you probably know me from my days in support and been around here for a number of years in, in some different roles. So that's me. Uh, we have a pretty full agenda here today, so we can kind of uh, get a little look uh, at what our, our content looks like here today. So we'll talk a little bit about some company updates. You probably all heard the rumblings about the merge with all plan. Uh, we got our licensing new licensing system. We did do the webinar on that previously, uh, but uh, we'll touch on a few things here again with that. Some of the, the UI UX uh, user experience stuff uh, with, the, with the dark mode and, and some of the underlying technology that, that we're implementing. Um, we have some connection enhancements, uh, another tool to kind of enhance uh, and facilitate our communication with our connections some handrail enhancements, some great stuff there with your galvanizing and venting options. Um, we're now saving some of the material fit operations, so that's great for, for rework and, and saving on changes and whatnot. And then a little bit on our online help documentation to make that a little bit better experience for you and make it not so dependent on software releases. So, And then we have a little short update on uh, partners that we work with, as well as the SDS2 toolbox with additional tools on our website. So, uh, some high level stuff here. So first off, company updates. Uh, there was a, a merger here, happened at the first of the year with all plans. So this is really great, really exciting. I feel like this opens up a, a lot of opportunities for SDS2. Uh, one, one potential example of that is all plan BIM plus. So for those of you not familiar with that, um, you know, I'd compare it to a Tremble Connect. That, that's uh, one that, that you may all be familiar with. Very similar platforms. Uh, there's a, a lot of potential here that presents itself with all plan BIM Plus, so that's great. And, and then we're always just continually evaluating our path. Even before this happened, we were always continually evaluating, you know, wh which direction to go with the software and whatnot. So got an exciting future ahead of us. Uh, you, all, you all may have noticed that the release schedule has changed slightly. So uh, last few years, as we've been doing these yearly releases, we've been trying to get them out uh, early in the year. We, we're kind of pushing it back a little bit to accommodate some of our documentary, documentation, our training materials, marketing, all that. Um, so probably push back a little bit further. You'll still see this first release here in the first quarter of the year. And then uh, we'll continue to see two releases. So one here in the first quarter, uh, one probably towards the end of the second quarter, second or third quarter, if I had to guess. So um, a big change that everybody is uh, you know, excited about and has a lot of questions about. We did the webinar uh, the other week, Steph and I did on this. So new licensing in SDS2, so it's gonna be an email-based login type of system that allows us to eliminate the HASP, the license file, the license manager, a lot of variables in there that, that could uh, cause issues. We have borrow features for when you're not connected to the internet for that, that login to uh, reach out and grab a license. This allows us to automate your updates, so no longer you no longer have to do license updates manually and receive license files and kick everybody out to do that um, or mess with the license manager. So that's a, a huge benefit there. Uh, and then our your company admin, so the the administrator, license administrator, whether that's an IT person or detailing manager, whoever handles all the the licensing for that has some benefits as far as tracking and 
gives them more control over who accesses which SDS2 products and things like that. So we'll touch on that a little bit here in a bit. Um, as far as our user experience goes, so we now have a, a dark mode, so reduces the, the eye strain for you as you're working those long hours into the night. Um, it is a user option, so we, we don't have to use that. It is a user option. There's some search enhancements to help us out with uh, finding where different tools are and whatnot, um, especially great when you're learning the software, onboarding new employees, that type of thing. Uh, some of the pinned icons that we're able to do on the, the left-hand side, we can adjust the size of those, adjust the position of those as they're pinned to our liking. So um, kind of taking some of that feedback as we go here with the new user interface and user experience and, and implementing those as we go. And then, of course, uh, our underlying technology continues to be developed as well. So, uh, connection enhancements. So connection enhancements that we have here, we have a, a minimum dimension for gussets, uh, also called a, a shoulder dimension. That's what you'll see it in the project settings as. You can see the, the dimension that that controls on the right here. I've highlighted uh, what we're controlling there. So that was kind of a pain in the, the past to meet this minimum that we would see on the design drawings related to gussets a lot. So we've implemented that. Last year with Joyce, we saw flush framed shear plate connections implemented. This year we have a, uh, expanded that so we can do flush, flare, flush framed clips. Uh, we can do end plates. So when those end plates extend uh, down past our flanges on a beam now, we'll do a web extension plate similar to what we've, we've done with clip angles in the past, just uh, you know expanded that to apply to and plates as well. And then calculation updates. So in the calculations, you're now gonna see unity ratios in there along with your limit states. Um, that means we can sort those you know, from, from lowest capacity to highest capacity. And for those of you not familiar with that, you know, anytime you see a unity ratio above one, that's gonna be a, a failed connection there that doesn't meet the design loads. Okay. Uh, we now now have a, a new modeling object called a connection cube. So this is kind of going to help us uh, enhance our reporting process for connection related items. So, you know, with with SDS2, our, our overall goal, you know, we're going to kind of try to try to start getting better connection design tools into some of these engineering offices. So that's always a struggle with everybody when they get just a generic table or a generic sketch and it doesn't work in all your framing situations, right? So, um, you know, we're gonna try to push for better tools in there and then that should result in a kind of trickle down effect to you as the, the detailer and fabricator getting a better connection design from the get-go. Today, as a detailer fabricator, this is gonna be a really great way an easy way for you to package up connection related RFIs. So, you know, I see everybody a lot of times now you're, you're taking screenshots, you're grabbing this, you're pulling this PDF and you're all kind, kind of combining that all manually. Um, this connection cube is gonna allow us to really package those up a lot better than what we can today. And then, Handrail enhancements, we saw this additional venting options. We got a lot of picket spacing enhancements. So especially on, you know, your your stair rails where you're transitioning from a, a sloped to a flat portion of that rail, your picket spacing wasn't always done real well in, in those areas. So we, we've enhanced that, spent some time getting that picket spacing correct. So that's going to be a big deal there. Putting posts in corners, L-shaped base plates there to accommodate some of those corner situations. And then material fit operations. So now we are now saving and storing any fit exact, fit notch, or fit cope operation that you do. So we'll be able to then go back and make changes to those fits, whether we're, you know, maybe if we're just changing the clearance, updating the clearance on that, we can, can edit that. And then we can modify and delete those individual fit operations rather than SDS2 having to always clear every fit operation. 
and then our, our plans are to expand this functionality in the future to all of our material operations, such as you know your different cuts, cut layout, cut on plane, um, things like that. So, and then our online help documentation. So this is going to uh, allow for a little bit better user experience with the help documentation. We're we're putting together a new support resource center. It's going to centralize all your content that you're looking for uh, with regards to help and different videos and whatnot. Uh, the benefit great benefit to this is our help is no longer dependent on an entire software release. So we can continually update that to make sure it's always uh, as, as up to date as possible. Okay, and then partners. So we've been working with uh, the Zeman robotic uh, welders, kind of enhancing that process, making sure a lot of that's working really well for you guys. Uh, and another big one we've been doing is Tecla Power Fab. So I've uh, been kind of cleaning up that interface a little bit and making it a little bit uh, smoother for us. And then with regards to, see this a lot for those guys building a lot of handrail uh, EMI. So we've been uh, working with them and on an interface to get information from SDS2 to that machine. And then different uh, components and whatnot that we're hosting on the SDS2 toolbox. So we've got a leveling plate, deck supports, welded studs. I think we've made, um, there's some enhancements to some of the other ones on there, but those are kind of just some of the highlights there that we've we've added or enhanced to the, the SDS2 toolbox. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get into a little demonstration of some of this stuff. So first thing I'm gonna start off with is the licensing. So when I start up SDS2 2022, if I've never started it before, or if I had logged off, I'm gonna see this. So the, this is the uh, email-based login that we keep talking about where I punch in my email address. A lot of you have probably seen the email to uh, set this account up. Hopefully you've done that and you'll be ready to go when it comes out. So I punch in my password, it goes out, via the internet, checks to make sure I have a license, and then SDS2 is gonna start up as long as I, I have a valid license out there. And then we get to our typical home screen. You are gonna see a new licensing tab over here. Um, it's gonna give me the current user that's logged in. I can log out. Uh, if I don't log out, all I have to do is just close SDS2. Next time I start up, it's gonna remember my login for me. And then, if I know I'm gonna go somewhere and, and not have internet for a while, but I still need to run SDS2, I'm gonna use this borrow feature. So great example is I'm going to NASCC here uh, towards the end of March. So I don't know when I'm gonna have internet connection. I'll probably be doing demos on the show floor. Don't know if I'll have internet connection there for my, my license to get checked. So in that case, what I'm gonna do, I'm leaving on a Tuesday coming back on a Friday. So if I figure uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's four days, I might just uh, go ahead and add five in there. So that'll give me five days without checking the internet for a license. Notice it gives me information then up here about when that borrowed license will expire. So I know 221 of 2022, that's five days from now as I, as I specified be able to run without internet connection there. Okay. When I come back from wherever it may be that I was at without internet connection and I want to return this back to, you know, especially when uh, you have multiple licenses of SDS2 where everybody's pulling from that pool, you want to go ahead and return that so others can uh, pull from that pool of licenses then. So simple matter of hit and return borrowed license and now it's kind of back to, to the old uh, checking the internet and, and my login for me. Okay, so that's that's really from the everyday standpoint, what you're gonna have to do with licensing. It's pretty simple, you log in, checks the, the internet for a license and uh, away we go. Uh, then we get into some of the user experience stuff. So I talked about the dark mode, 
talked about larger icons where our pinned icons are going to be. So if I open up my user and site options, okay, in here, I'm going to have options for my UI theme, light. I'm going to switch that over to dark. And then we also have the quick access sidebar icon size. I'm going to change that to large. And we had this in previous versions as well, but if I hit my modeling tab over there on the left and scroll down, I can see, uh, you know, how, how do I want all my section sizes, piece marks, everything like that to be displayed. We've made it easy to give you kind of pre preset options here for running light or dark mode. So come into your color settings. I'm going to hit dark mode. That's going to uh, change like my section sizes, piece marks, things like that displayed in modeling to a white color. Since I'm uh, going dark mode, I'm going to have a dark background. We want that lighter color to show through on, on the dark background. Okay, so I do have to restart SDS2 in that case. And so I close out my home screen, restart SDS2. So you're going to notice this time, I don't have to log in. Again, when I close SDS2, all it does, it shuts down, it remembers my login for the next time that I run the software and I don't have to punch that in every time. I would really only wanna be log, hit, hitting this log out if I'm sharing this with another user that needs to uh, use a separate login to SDS2 as well. So now we get a, a nice dark mode again, really helps with the eye strain. I love it. I run with everything uh, in dark mode, not just SDS2, but all my emails and PowerPoint and every, every software I have that has a dark mode I use. So some of it's just personal preference, uh, but I do feel like it helps uh, with my eye strain as well. So, so now I hop into modeling and when we get into modeling, modeling is going to look a bit different as well as far as, you, you know, the color scheme and that since, since I've switched over to this dark mode. And then remember in my user and site options, I also updated the uh, pinned icons that will be on the left side of my screen. I updated those to be the large icons. And I thought I hit modeling. Maybe I did not user error. There we go. Okay, so we get into our model. You can can see I'm just going to hide a couple of these things here. Um, you can see the, the larger size icons now on the right hand side. Again, Right click and drag now will let me adjust the, the position of those icons so I can kind of customize the pinned icons there a little bit. In your search, talk about some enhancements to the search. So now as I am typing information in here, sorry, I started modeling up twice because I was getting impatient. Okay, so as I type in my search, it brings up my results. And then as I hover over the results in this list, you're going to notice over here, it'll highlight the ribbon or the button if it's visible for me as I uh, go down this list. So really helpful for me to find out, oh, okay, I know this is in that ribbon. If I type something in there that is currently visible on the, the current ribbon that I have there. So some of my construction line icons, notice it's gonna highlight the actual button on my ribbon for me. So helpful for finding the icons, learning, learning where things are at. So that's good stuff there. Um, then, we, then we move on to some of the connections. Okay, so first thing in connections, we talked about the shoulder dimension, that minimum uh, shoulder dimension. So if I look at some of my bracing over here, I'm just going to add construction lines on here just to see what that dimension is right now. So we've got from here to here, kind of hard to see on the, the yellow plate there, but we've got uh, 1 and 1 16th is what that dimension is currently. If I look at my project settings, and I'm going to use my search here again, if 
fine shoulder. It's in my gusset plate settings, minimum shoulder width. So we have a, uh, for welded end fittings, we have a, a one inch. Let's go ahead and just increase that to say 1.5. And let me go ahead and redo this here, mark that stuff for processing. Get rid of my dimension and the construction lines as we're waiting. Okay, so if I have a look here, re-add those construction lines, re-add that dimension, and we're gonna see we got one and a half now. So that changes that. And in the past, that was such a pain because I'd have to come in and figure out, okay, I gotta increase the, the length and the width of this plate. Then I gotta refigure out, okay, the, the cope length and the cope depth on those corners, all sorts of stuff. So this is uh, very handy there. I know, uh, I know I used to get that request even all the way back in my support days. So glad to see that happen there. Your joist. So we talked about joists. Uh, I have auto standard set up, or excuse me, auto standard connections set up to give me a flush frame clip instead of a flush frame shear connection. If I were to just edit one of these, you're gonna you're gonna see that I have auto standard, and we now have flush flush framed clip right there in our list of connections to use. I can also you know, edit that clip angle. It's a it's a connection component, just like uh, any other connection there. So we get that. You probably noticed on the left hand side we talked about the unity ratios being included. So now, in the past, we only had the limit states in here. We're now getting the unity ratios uh, displayed for us there as well. And you're going to notice that it's sorted from you know lowest limit state all the way down to the highest limit state or highest unity ratio down to the lowest unity ratio. So, so that's a flush frame clips. Uh, if we come over here and take a look at our uh, end plates, we talked about the end plate extensions. I'm gonna kind of uh, just isolate this joint here by hiding everything that's unselected so we can see that a little better. I might make everything uh, just fully transparent. Let's go transparent main, maybe that might be easier. We can kind of see what's happening uh, within there. So with the uh, extended end plate, okay, so, so whether, whether I change that, you know, by, it, it could happen because of the loading requirements on that. So right now we only have, uh, you know, three rows of bolts in here. So that's the left end. If I go adjust the loading in here, so let's say we go, uh, let's go 80 kips. And I'm just going to change this one. Okay, so extra rows of bolts are required. It extends that down past my flange. I get the uh, web extension plate on there. I could also just double click on my connection component and adjust my rows this way. So when I do it this way, slide that off to the side. Say we go five rows, we're going to get that there as well. Uh, and then Probably a little tight with the uh, clearance, bolt clearances here um, is why it's skipping down below the flange is my guess. I can override that if I just want all those to be three. Override that, I can do so. There you go, I'm just gonna change that one. And there we get that. Uh, you know, even on, the, on this other side here, so let's say I come in here and maybe we're upset a little bit. Uh, it is sharing those. Maybe we're upset two and a half inches and let me adjust the loading on that as well. Maybe we need 80 kips on that. No, I'm just gonna change that one. So we're sloping, 
we're extended down plat past the, the bottom flange. We're not sharing over on this side for some reason, probably because I fiddled with the um, bolt spacings on there. So if I let STS2 come up with the bolt spacings and that, we're going to get uh, shared bolts there. Clearing out for your, your bolt clearances there to make, make all your erection and fabrication easy. So now uh, just to kind of give you a little bit more in that uh, to show you if I run our expanded calcs. So we're gonna save this uh, PDF, the expanded calc off. And I just want to show you in here you know what the the unity ratio looks like within here again so still have our our limit states um, in the table and in the information reported here we just expanded to include the unity ratio also So if I were to look at the uh, bookmarks, then I'm just going to go straight to the bookmarks. I'm going to go down to my left end here to my connection strengths. Okay, so here we have our limit state table. Notice the unity ratio in there and then our limit state. So again, that sort of make a easier readability there for me. So I know what's kind of the limiting factor for me on that stuff. Uh, there is a setting related to that as well. So if I come back up to my project settings and uh, do a search for limit state. So in my design settings, I do have a, a new reports tab over here to turn that the actual limit states off. So as it stands today, I'm always going to get the unity ratio. I have the option or not to include the, the limit states to be reported with. So then that leads us to our uh, connection cubes that I mentioned when I had that PowerPoint up. So with the connection cubes, what that's going to allow me to do, I, I can do this by selecting connection components or by selecting member ends. I'm going to just circle up. Um, I maybe just want this one end plate to be included in this. So I'm just going to pick that one connection component. I could grab all three and it would include, include more information uh, for all the members, and maybe I ought to do it on this shared connection to show you multiple members within there. So when I do that, in my contextual toolbar up here, I can say connection cube add. It adds that connection cube. I do have an option in my display options to turn the connection cubes off. So I don't always have to have those visible. Now, when I'm here, I can double click on that. It highlights the members that uh, have connections associated to this cube. And now what I'm able to do, I can give it a name up here. So maybe I'll call it end plate uh, shared connection. Okay. Uh, I have schedule of minimums that I can include on this report. I can get a 2D detail. Uh, I can get a, a U3D embedded directly into the PDF. I can include design strengths, the expanded calc. So maybe I just want the design strengths and I don't want all those additional pages with the expanded calculations. I can do that now. Uh, any additional notes that I need to include on this, maybe I'm using this as a, a type of RFI. So I might be able to use my notes here could be additional formulas. It could just be in additional information about the framing situation, why, why I'm doing what I'm doing here, anything you need really. So, um, you know, is it acceptable to share the connection as shown in this connection report? Okay. Whatever I may need there. Uh, I can include a cover sheet. So this would be a PDF that I've created. Maybe my company has, you know, a standard cover sheet that goes on any reports that I do here. So with that, 
I believe that I have a PDF created and right here. So I, I use kind of a standard letterhead. So I'm going to attach that to this job and I'm gonna specify that as my cover sheet. Now I could do a number of different attachments in here and then organize them as I see fit in the table of contents over here on the right. So not just a cover sheet, could be a number of different things. Again, maybe some of you guys have, you know, um, standard sheets for for connections you've done in the past that you you take advantage of and utilize you can can insert that into this report. So now I'm going to go ahead and generate this report. So I, I generate report. Auto view is going to uh, tell it to go ahead and open this. Okay. It has to in order to create this and include this 2D detail. We have to uh, detail or generate the 2D drawing for that. So that's why that question's coming up there. And so it's detailing that. Now it's going to go ahead and export the, the PDF and that will open for me here in Bluebeam once it's generated. Okay, so here's my cover sheet. I, I used, uh, again, just a, a standard PDF. That could be anything that you, you have, your company uses. I get my schedule of minimums included. Okay, and then the 2D detail, we do have the ability to go in and clean this 2D detail up. We get our U3D embedded in there right away so that I can take advantage of that. You know, um, very similar to the other U3Ds and how this works. There is the model tree that when I pick information, you get all the different uh, metadata attached to that, material sizes, bolt sizes, all that information. So that's included in there. Okay, and then we get into our design strength summaries. And it's including this for uh, just those connections that I had picked uh, when I added that cube. So I'm not getting all the additional ends, I'm just focusing in on this joint and these particular connections here. Here's my additional notes, as you can see. And then we start getting into some more of the um, beam information, you know, your, your end connection information here. All, all the, a lot of the same information we're used to seeing on our um, standard calculation reports that we put out just a little bit more control over organizing that and choosing which connections are included with that. So good stuff there. Uh, if I open Drawing Editor, just to give you an idea here, so I'm gonna open Drawing Editor. We do have a new drawing type in there for these connection cube details. <clears throat> so this is gonna allow me to you know, come in here, clean up the drawing that SDS2 generated from, from uh, this connection cube that we saw, which was inserted on that PDF. Possibly. Let's wait for Drawing Editor to open here. There we go. Okay, so we now have a connection cube detail in here. We can see I've got that connection cube one. Now it's just like any other drawing. So whatever information I want to go ahead and, and move or edit or add, you know, I can do do all that, everything that I need there. So and clean that up. I can even add this then when I go to do a add standard detail, I could use this as a standard detail also to insert onto any other drawing type within drawing editor. So you know, I can isolate that, add, add additional views to it. If I need a you know, left end, left or right view of that connection, I can get that as well by isolating that in modeling, just like I do other, whether it was a, isolating a member or isolating submaterial, um, I can do that within here. Oops, got to close that drawing before it's going to let me isolate it. 
Okay, so there I isolate it, you know, preset left side, right side views, top, bottom, or, or anything that else that I need. So just like I would isolate a member or material within modeling, same functionality there. So that kind of uh, gets us that connection cube information and, and kind of what that's all about leads us into then our handrail enhancement. Okay, so I've just got basic uh, handrail coming around here. I, I noticed that when I input now, I probably did it pretty quick. Didn't get my uh, mid rail up where it needed to be. User error, can't ever fix that, right? So what we're kind of looking at on this is our galvanizing options. So I mentioned there's a lot of uh, new venting options that we have for our handrail re with regards to uh, the, the galvanizing. So within here, uh, when I go to my gal vents tab, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different options within here. Um, options for adding that to the ends. How do I want that? Do I want it in a vent hole in the elbow? Do I want it in rail and then we come down to our you know internal and external vent holes so in the past we never had control over a lot of these internal hole sizes we've given you the ability to adjust these now so um, you know let's go ahead I'm just going to go ahead and go with a half inch on some of these so again half inch, I can make adjustments as, as I see fit here to meet what my requirements are. Um, and I'm gonna get that so we'll even get the ability now to get the uh, vent hole in the bottom of our base plates. So let me make this uh, fully transparent. It might be a little easier to see when it's fully transparent. So now when I zoom in here and look at my vent holes, my internal vent holes, we can see my internal vent holes there. In the past, I think it always created that internal hole. Basically, it, it did a fit to this rail and it, it was the same size as that rail. Same up here at the top of my post. That was always the, the same size as my post, if I recall correctly. You can see we're getting a hole also then in the base plate. Okay, so zoom around, look underneath here. I adjusted on this one the size of that hole. Uh, over on this other rail where I didn't adjust it, we can see that hole uh, kind of matches the inside diameter of our, our tube there or our rail there. So a lot of different galvanizing options there. If I go take a look at these other rails where I've added my pickets, a flat rail, you know, not too bad. But if I just go ahead and double click this, this rail here, you can see in my pickets, my posts and my pickets tab, I've got a whole new sections for my picket spacing, you know, control over the first and last one. Um, you know, I can rounding options, different things like that. So I've got this set up for three and three quarters. So if I just go ahead and uh, add some construction lines in here and give you some dimensions. Okay, so we are, okay, that's a max clearance, the three and three quarters is. So we're getting, uh, you know, meeting, meeting that uh, max clearance option. Something we found. Uh, along the way of developing this is a lot of uh, users were not aware that we have project settings that set the default options for our handrail. So if I go back to project settings and I go to my plugin defaults, it, it technically is a plugin. I have member plugin defaults. I can set all the default options for my handrail uh, within this window so that way when I go start modeling it's going to use the, the default options that I set up within here okay it's not just for handrail 
We've got it for pour stops, roof frames, girts, different member types uh, uh, that have been developed. Okay, so here you see my picket spacing options. Pretty much everything within that handrail edit window I'm gonna see in here. We've even added a couple options for detailing within this setup as well. So this is gonna um, affect how some of my details come out when I use the uh, templates for detailing handrails. So then uh, finally, if I just come over here and I, I just wanna show you a sloped scenario on here, a scenario where we got that handrail on a set of stairs, just to kind of demonstrate the, the picket spacing a little bit better and that we did do the work over here as well, not just on flat rails. So if I add a rail to a stringer here, I'm just gonna do this, uh, this bottom stringer for our case here. And I've got my info in there. You know, I'm gonna do a PN there. Uh, maybe we did a splice on that, that top end. Okay, I'll do a welded connection, weld that directly to my stringer. Okay, and we'll be able to see here where we transition from the slope portion of that rail to the flat portion of that rail. We're taking that into account now with the picket spacing doing a much better job for you guys there. So. That, that should be a huge time saver, help a lot of guys out there with that. And then corner posts. Okay, so I uh, kind of skipped over corner posts here. We'll go back to that and I'll demonstrate that on my uh, galvanized, kind of my flat rail here I started with. So you'll see in the edit window up top here, you're gonna see a new option for right corner post and left corner post. So if you have a return there, you'll have the option to give me a corner post. I can add that so it's aligned with the set, the main section of that or the return of that. And then within my, right, excuse me, I have a right corner post tab here. I also have a left corner post tab. That's gonna allow me to control the connection of that one post. All on its own, I can do an L-shaped plate, all the different variables for that L-shaped plate. So I should have done a rotation there on that L-shaped plate. Um, we do have control over that, but we get the idea. You know, in the past you could get that really close, but the fits and whatnot weren't done properly. So we're, we're doing all the fits and, and that properly around that corner post a, a bit better for you there now. So a lot more control over that. And then uh, that kind of leads us into the online help stuff. So when I hit the help button now in 2022, uh, it's still going to open in a web browser, and it came up on my other screen, so I'll just drag it over here for us. So still going to open in a web browser, uh, but you'll notice the the address is no longer a local address to uh, whether it's your server or your local machine. It would always pull up that HTML file that was on there. It's all hosted on our website now. Again, like I said, this makes it kind of more live and, and uh, will be to date all the time with this as we make changes no longer dependent on the full software release now some of you may not be on the internet all the time i understand that so for those of you who aren't we still do install the local copies of that and it will fall back to opening the, the local copies of the help menu should it not be able to to read the ones on the internet uh, again drawback to that is that you're at the mercy of kind of the what's installed with the software release. And if there's updates or changes, you wouldn't get that um, automatically like you do with the online uh, version of those. So, so that's kind of what I got for you today. Um, 
you know, I, I said I'd take some questions here. Just want to, um, you know, throw out a couple of dates here for you so you guys don't miss. I, I realize today's pretty high level type of stuff. This is a sneak peek of what's coming in SDS2 2022. So things that we have coming up, you know, we'll be at NASCC in Denver here towards the end of March. Uh, and then we're going to do SCS2 2022 workshops. These will just be, you know, uh, webinars here that does a more deep dive into some of the topics that I talked to about today, give you a few more of the ins and outs of how this stuff works. So that's going to be March 15th to 17th. And we'll run those, I believe, at 9 a.m. and 10, 15 a.m. each day. And then... Uh, SDS2 Summit. So last year we moved to SDS2 Summit. We were able to get down to Florida, had a great time down there and a great turnout down there. So this year we're going to San Antonio, Texas. We got a nice spot right on the river walk down there. Uh, that's going to be October 19th and 20th for the SDS2 Summit. So exciting stuff coming up. Uh, I'm going to open it up to questions now. And it kind of give you guys a little bit of time to put some of those questions together. We do have an, another poll for you, just a little bit of information for us. I'm always curious, um, you know, where you guys are working at, who you work for, what version of the SCS2 you're, you're running, all that good stuff. So uh, this one's just kind of, you know, what type of company are you working for? I do see there are some questions coming in here. So So yeah, I mean I I know a lot of you are going to have questions on specific, you know, issues that you may have turned into support in the past or whatnot. Um, if you've got, you know, something very specific that you're looking for, would, uh, you know, definitely reach out to your support rep and, and uh, see if they we've gotten that specific issue fixed. I, I don't have time to cover everything uh, today. You know, along with all of this stuff that I've shown today, do keep in mind, uh, we do allocate you know, a good portion of our, our manpower, our development manpower to maintenance items and, and fixing issues, things like that. So uh, one question is on the, the minimum shoulder width here that I showed. So that currently is just a project setting for the overall project. As I showed here today, uh, we don't have control over that on an individual case-by-case -case basis. So that's just an overall project setting today. Um, here's one on the, uh, the corner post on rails. Will it do a three-way miter? I'm not sure that we're doing a three-way miter yet. Um, I believe the way that worked, if you uh, caught it when I was modeling it, we're doing a miter on those uh, top rails and, and uh, basically a, a fit exact coping out on that, uh, the corner post where it meets those. So yeah, again, um, you know, 2022 is gonna be out in quarter one, so that'll be, uh, you know, should be by the end of March and related to the license stuff when the, the new releases that take advantage of the new license stuff, those will be out in, in quarter one here as well. Um, Another question here is related to handrails. If if we're working in a job from 2018 and convert that up, will the newer handrail features work with what was previously modeled? Uh, I, I would expect that to work with 
uh, when you do that convert. So good question there. And um, yeah, a lot of these are, are pretty specific here again. Um, and again, I'm trying to keep it related to what we what we looked at here today. I know every single person has their specific thing that they're looking for, trying to trying to keep things uh, related here to, to what we uh, showed today. And if you do have specific questions, again, please reach out to your support rep, talk to them about specific uh, situations that you might be running into. Um, so yeah, I, a lot of this again, trying to keep it related. I know you guys have, uh, know you have a lot of questions about other areas. Please reach out to your support rep for the other areas. Um, Question here on the connection cubes. So the question there is related to, um, you know, how to get the information presented in there properly. So uh, under the hood, I think it's it's using a set of detailing templates to determine uh, what information to place on there. Uh, but then as I showed there during the webinar, during the presentation, you do have the ability to open up that connection cube detail and adjust that just like you would any other draw. So again, uh, 2022, when you get that, it's coming out in quarter one. So that means uh, should be, you should see that available by the end of March. Um, another question here is uh, detailing going to be added to the main screen again. That was that was uh, there in 2021i. When you go to utilities again on the, the home screen, even in 2021i, you're going to see your detail options uh, under utilities. Same here with 2022. Um, contextual toolbar ribbons, can, can we customize the contextual toolbar ribbons? Uh, yeah, that again, that was something that was added in 2021i to be able to edit and change the contextual uh, ribbons. So 2021i has that, 2022 has that as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the questions here. Again, I know you guys have a lot of questions. I, I wanna keep it related to what we're talking about here today and, and stay on track. So all those specific questions you have related to other stuff, please reach out to your support rep, get a hold of them, talk with them. I'm sure your account manager or others here would be happy to talk to you as well, but uh, support's gonna be the best place to go for some of those specific questions. So. I want to thank everybody for joining us today and, uh, you know, look forward to seeing you here in a few weeks to dig, dig deep into these and the uh, 2022 workshop. So thanks, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.